Hi, my name is Wouter Hemery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. MV Augusta is one of the teams competing in the Moto2 GP race class. In this interview, their technical director Brian Gillen reveals the top priorities when it comes to optimizing the aerodynamics. Enjoy the interview. I'm currently a technical director of the MV Augusta R&D group. So inside of the R&D group of, of MV Augusta, we have all of the uh, engine design, uh, engine testing, uh, vehicle design, vehicle testing, homologations, and styling. And uh, so bringing all of that together, which is everything that, that, that designs and develops a motorcycle. How did I get here? That's a good question, Wouter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm originally from America, from Buffalo, New York. I, uh, I grew up in a family that had a multi-line motorcycle dealership for over 40 years. So my family uh, sold uh, basically every Italian brand of motorcycle uh, that was in existence in in the 80s and 90s. Uh, also, some historic uh, German brands like Mako, uh, Swedish brands at that time, Husqvarna, uh, Ducati, uh, MV Augusta, yeah. as well. And and I grew up in that environment in, in the, the 80s and 90s. Tough times for for European motorcycle brands, but uh, interesting times. So we joined uh, uh, the Moto2 World Championship uh, in in 2019 as an uh, an official team uh, participating in Moto2. Uh, with our technical partner, Forward Racing. And uh, we started the project basically um, nine months before the start of the championship, yeah. uh, completely designing from the ground up a race bike to compete in the Moto2 category. And we had been monitoring Moto2 for quite some time, but there was a change in the rules that came about where a new powertrain was entering in Moto2 that was a three-cylinder engine. And since we'd been competing in a world championship, world super sport, uh, since 2013 with our three cylinder bike, let's say we okay. felt like we had, a, let's say a, a good understanding with what makes a three cylinder engine and a vehicle powered by a three cylinder engine work very well. And we had to look very closely in where we could bring in our knowledge and where we could try to speed up, let's say the application of our knowledge. And one of those areas is without a doubt with aerodynamics. Because uh, inside of a spec class where the powertrain is standard for everybody, tires are standard, electronics are standard, and we had to very quickly come up to speed on uh, what we could do from a, an aerodynamic standpoint to look at, let's say, uh, two or even three main aspects. You know, and the first one, and it's you know probably the, the, the easiest one for most people to understand, is uh, the, the coefficient of drag, you know. Yes. Uh, everybody is always looking to reduce the coefficient of drag as much as possible uh, because uh, they're focused on top speed. Yeah. Um, but to be quite honest, the amount of time that you're on a racetrack at top speed condition, wide open throttle and wide open RPM percentage wise in a lap time is very small. Yeah. So even big gains in what could be a top speed advantage on an overall, let's say, lap performance ratio is limited. You have a performance in, in top speed. You have performance under braking. Mm -hmm. You have performance, let's say, on turn in, performance on acceleration. And one, uh, one key factor that we can't forget about is not giving any performance advantage or limiting the performance advantage of your adversaries. Yep. Because when you're on the straightaway and you're going fast, people are also trying to get in behind you. Yep. And they're trying to use you as a performance advantage for them. So one very important uh, aspect of, of the development phase is how not to give your a competitor an advantage. Uh, it's not just the speed that uh, we're interested in when we're designing a bike, but it's also the comfort of the rider. Because if you think you're doing, uh, you know, on average uh, uh, 20 races around the world, your, your rider is racing in conditions that uh, uh, are like in Thailand, where you have ambient temperatures that are extremely high. You have a motorcycle that's generating a tremendous amount of, uh, let's say, thermal energy, yep. expelling a tremendous amount of thermal energy, and a, a performance factor on that bike is not only expelling the heat from the bike, but making sure that thermal energy is staying away from the rider, because the rider, his performance, his mental performance, is a function of his body temperature. Yeah. So if we can also maintain, let's say, more constant com relative compared to our competition, the comfort of our rider in conditions like that, it's also a technical advantage. But also you have things like wind buffeting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, wind buffeting coming off of a, of a front fairing of a bike uh, when you're going, you know, 300 kilometers an hour and you're shaking, you know, at, uh, at uh, it, 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 uh, you know, 20 hertz 
and, you know, it's, it's, it's shaking your head. It's having impact on the vision. And when you're talking about hundreds of a second to make a decision to grab the front brake or not grab the front brake, you know, it, it's, it has a big impact on lap time. So that was it for this interview with Brian Gillen on the top priorities for Moto2 GP aerodynamics. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a comment below to start an interesting discussion and hope to see you soon for the next video. Stay tuned. Bye bye.